Don't forget to put the comments up on the... Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. We're going live now. This is the pregame part of the show here where we get uh, everything working. Oh, I think, I think the comments are working. Oh, great. Yeah, I'll do a, I'll do a test. I know everybody's been waiting There it goes. It should show up. There it is. Okay, now I'm going to... Uh, now that will be immortalized. Now I'm going to find this and then share it so that my friends will know we're on. Usually we set this on automatic tonight. I, I just felt wild like I would just control it by myself. There we are. Or is that last week? That's last week. There we go. I'm going to put this tag pinned to top. Okay. Now I'm going to share this to my personal profile. How did it get so warm in here, Ryan? Isn't it hot? Oh, it seems to have cooled down compared I... to what it was like. Yeah. Okay, now we're there. You know what? I'll also share it to our uh, insider page. Share to group. This is for people that have been here. Otherwise, you don't get to see this one. It's kind of an extra, extra VIP service. Okay. And it reminds them that maybe they should come here. Or, tune, or at least tune in, for crying out loud. Here comes, I see Paul Kokoda. Um, does he have a pizza? He does not have a pizza, ladies and gentlemen. He's, you know, I, I, did, I did lock the door, so you're going to have to. He's adding to the collection of Doritos that we have. Yeah. He, he does have, it looks like he's schlepping Doritos. Now I'm bringing up my uh, thing here so I can send comments. Great. This is awesome. We're on. Nice to be here, Barbara Fisher. Actually, Mary's um, Mary's going to be watching from home tonight. Barbara Fisher and Lounge Cadets. She's uh, she called in sick with a little sore throat. Um, you really had the place locked down. Did I lock the outer door too? Yeah. Oh. I think I was putting the closed sign up, and I must have accidentally locked. I believe my own propaganda. And um, anyway, Barbara Fisher, at the last minute, before I was heading over to the Statler this evening, Mary sent me a message saying, gee, I'm, I'm, is it okay if I miss tonight? I'm getting over a sore throat. So not only was the sore throat a surprise to me, but the fact that she was getting over one and the fact that she... I didn't know she had one. Yeah. R Ryan Weissars, president of WBIG TV. Well, I'm here, you know, even though I have my own struggles, I'm still here because I wouldn't want to miss this. So now I have to be bubbly. Oh, I think that's. Well, you do have to be bubbly. Hi, everyone. And uh, speaking of bubbly, oh, that was Bob. Oh, I thought you meant Bob Davis. No, no, the other Bob. Oh, no. <laughs> He's waving. Now does it He's... all make more sense? Yeah, that, yeah. Career Express Bob. You're watching Lounge Academy. Me too, Barbara. We'll see if she tunes in and watches. I hope so. Paul Kakoda is feverishly, speaking of 
sore throats and things. He's feverishly opening his Doritos. I do not Doritos. You know, I am, I am a creature here. You know that. I am too. I appreciate that. Paul says he's a creature of habit, and we're, we're glad to be part of this habit. I'm just a creature. Academy is a habit with me. Doritos are a habit with Paul. You can have worse habits than that. Bob, uh, I hope Bob is stable. I, I threw some salt down, but it's, it's really slippery there. So far, so good. I put some of those giant salt pellets that we're experimenting with here, because we like to invent things here at Lounge Academy. So like to, ankle and falls down. Yeah, 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 you're more likely to twist your ankle on those giant salt pellets than you are to slip and fall. Right, Alan Whitney, nice to see you with us tonight, lounging, relaxing, along with Vicki, who I get to call Gaia, because I'm in show business. If you're in show business, you could call Vicki Gaia. And our very own chief engineer, George Thomas Apple. How's the signal reaching you out there in Silver Creek, George? Everything working okay? and see, you know, see winter out there. Gaia just liked the stream. Oh, yeah. Gaia just liked the stream. And we like Gaia. Here comes Courier Express Bob. Yeah, all right. Yeah, or a booth person. We could use the, the booth as a ticket booth. Did you, uh, did you stay overnight? I see your car is all snowed in. Well, no, I just keep the car. It just, you know, it's it's an outdoor car. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it looks, all right, I understand. yeah, it looks like it was here all winter. No, but somebody's got you sort of That's North in. Buffalo snow on it. No, somebody's got you blocked in sort of. Oh no, that was just Courier Express Bob. He was just oh, waiting, right. waiting for us for the show to start. Was, you know, not ten feet away from a fire hydrant, so I booked it across the street, which is oh. adventurous. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. I just threw down, luckily, I just threw down some of our experimental giant salt pellets. Yeah, they'd be great on a stage for a dinner for four. But Wouldn't it be? Yeah. yeah <laughs> one, one pellet. Yeah. Our Goldman's patented ankle twister salt. I bought a whole pallet of that stuff. Well, the price was right. Yeah. It was like 170 bucks or something, 150 bucks. For 1,700 pounds. Wow. Yeah. But you go through it but really the, quick when you do use thing? it. Yeah. Because um, it's weird having salt that big. These pellets, they're like the size of my thumb. Like that. That's how big our salt pellets uh -huh. are. But they give instant traction because they're like rocks. Mm -hmm. So even if, if it's too cold, to even melt the ice, you still got yeah, the traction. I saw them on the on the steps. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's the same color as the snow, so yeah. it kind of doesn't no, interfere I, with I, the beauty. I slipped on one and I, I went back. <laughs> oh, you tripped on the salt? No, 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 no. Being the agile uh, athletic type, you, you know who I am. I bounced back like a champion. Well, I'm glad of that. Who hasn't fallen down our steps, right? I haven't yet. Or the steps, either here or the Statler. A lot of, we, we're kind of equal. And those are the indoor steps over there. Yeah. I think what, Andy Jones, didn't he go down at once? And Al, I don't think Alan has. No. And he, he's the one you would think would be, you know, you know, because he had the cane and he was a little nervous about the steps, but he took him like a champ. He's very aware of his surroundings. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't take anything for granted. Where Andy Jones was cocky because the guy was like a athlete. Yeah, he was a marathon runner. Yeah, yeah he did. He said he did like a thousand sit-ups every morning or some dumb thing, and yeah. so. He, he would just go zipping around these stairs. And, yep. you know, so of he course, was unlike Jocko. Athletes are the way, ones you know, that, that get hurt. There, there, there was a contrast between him and Jocko. Jo Jocko slowed down. Yeah. He didn't do mobility. one sit up every morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Andy just kept going full speed oh, ahead and then just. That's the way to do it. You know, I really do think of that guy a lot. He was a. He was priceless. He was. We are lucky to have him as part of the show. I see Zach is watching the show. Hi, Zach. In case you're wondering where uh, Mary is, she called in sick at the last minute. She said she's got a sore throat, didn't want to risk giving anybody the uh, coronavirus. Oh, boy. <laughs> so now I have to step in. Yeah, It'll so. Be effervescent. Right, yeah, so Ryan's going <laughs> to take, take a stab at being effervescent tonight. I made a couple calls out to some effervescent actresses that we keep as stand-ins for Mary, and uh, hopefully some will be, you know, back in well, they have to the full roster. They have to get into their costumes. Yeah, well, some of them, I mean, the... Some people, like, they, they live the lounge lifestyle and they don't have to change to come to Lounge Academy. Those are the true pros. Yeah. Who, named, uh, who named that disease, that corona? That I think the inventors. It was invented. It's, it's patented. There was. They absolutely killed that beer. They absolutely murdered it. Oh, kind of like the Without AIDS thinking. diet reducing plan. Yeah. Well, coronavirus is not a new thing. A coronavirus is a classification of virus that's been around for years. I see. Uh, the SARS virus, from, if you recall from, I don't know, 15 years ago, was a type of coronavirus. This is uh, preliminarily called the novel coronavirus mm. because it's new. I don't think it has an official name yet. Oh, that's why they call it novel? Yes. Speaking of Alan McCausland, the Scots joining us. Nice to see you, Scott. How are you, sir? How's, how's California? David Suter, nice to see you. Wonderful having you in the, in the lounge. There are some people who really think that drinking the beer will give you coronavirus, though. Well, it can give you worse than that. You've got to ruin company. Absolutely ruin I mean, You never know, though. Some people say there's no such thing as bad publicity, you know? Yeah, you might be right. I don't know. All of a sudden, you're thinking that Corona, and maybe you need a Corona beer. You know, just have a few, you know, forty or fifty thousand more get that disease, and then see how good that beer does. <laughs> well, but but it's not like people are going to be afraid of the, the beer. If though. anything, it's a subliminal suggestion. You know, you're. That's what I'm saying. It was their name. It was their name first. I mean, that, that was his lawsuit. Uh, now, the, the, remember the AIDS pills they used to sell? Sort of. It was yeah. a big brand, AIDS Diet Reducing Plan, back in the 70s, I guess, 60s, 70s. Yeah, it was like Dexatrim. And they got killed by the, the name confusion, or, or, you know, for some reason. Um, maybe because there was, there was sort of an indirect uh, tie-in, because... Unfortunately, if you if you had the disease, you you lost weight, and they had a 
they had a pill named the same, unfortunately, the same thing as this disease that came along. And maybe, uh, maybe it was just such an uncomfortable uh, mental image, you know, that you, people were just turned off because they, they went away, you know, that. But, but I think Corona beer, you know, I think, I think it's disassociated enough from the concept of having, other than the hangover you can get from Corona, corona beer, which is like as bad as any flu. I mean, well, what, a, what a great marketing concept, you know, they put the line in it, all of a sudden Corona beer became a... A disease. A no, no, a popular oh, yeah, beer. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, brilliant. They never You're heard right. of it. Now, You're right. never heard of it in the first, and now it's hugely popular, and everybody puts limes in it, and then this disease comes along and ruins it. <laughs> well, well, we'll see if it ruins it or helps it or, or does, has no effect. I was only thinking about... Beer. We're talking about Corona beer. Yeah, but I was... No, no, I'm thinking of a substitute name for it, you know? from China with Corona beer? Uh, supposedly. Oh my God. Uh, I didn't drink Corona beer before the virus, and I'm not going to drink it now. <laughs> there you go. But uh, the SARS virus came in handy for me, though, because I was taking a Dale Carnegie class, and you had to tell them something to help them remember your name. So my name is Ryan Lysars, and I told them, Ryan rhymes with lion, and the lion's lying down because he has SARS. He doesn't feel good. Handy for me, though, because I was taking... Sorry about that. Your last name? How do you spell your last name? L Y S A R Z. Well, I would guess that. I can spell it. I can't add two and two in the check. <laughs> Terrible math person, but I don't like math and I like to. I don't like math either. Yeah. My wife handled all the bills, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, unfortunately she is in uh, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes I look at it it's like a jail, you know, it's a sad situation for her. Every time I leave, which is almost every day, they mm -hmm. I don't belong here. And they say that will never, never leave them, no matter what their condition of dementia is. Mm, wow, that's too bad. Yeah, yeah. Is it dementia or Alzheimer's? Right, same, same thing? Same no, thing? I know it's the same, same thing. Yeah, little by little, she's forgetting things and yeah. would misplace things. And the last straw was she up in a TV room and Nancy in our house in a lot of little rooms and go in the front, yell upstairs, and make sure she's taking a shower. Nancy and yell it out. The door's open. Mm -hmm. It's not my house. I find her on the street about four blocks away. Oh boy. She's in a village and thank God not on some freeway mm -hmm. type road. Yeah. And I said, so where are you going? And she says, I went to the library. How come you don't have any books? And it was like she was coming back. Wow. And she says, I couldn't find her. And she knows exactly where it is. So it's five blocks away. So I figured, I don't know, some cop calling me and got together. Yeah. My children have been very active in this. My daughter and her son and son in law. And we got a good attorney that deals with people that have that situation. Courier, Courier Express, Bob, yes. if you don't mind, jump over a seat. Uh, the, the camera will pick you up better because you're kind of eclipsed by... Uh, there are other celebrities here. I know you've got a lot of... By Paul Kokoda. So, yeah, that's good. Right. This is fine. Yeah, well, any, anywhere over there. Over Actually, at, at my age, I'd rather lay down than sit down. But if you want uh -huh. to sit here, I'll behave. Yeah, yes. If you want to keep it We'll on. tell you. We'll tell you when it's time to, to lie on the piano. I wouldn't mind that either. It's good for my neck. Oh yeah, that's right. I'd like to say hi to Rosemary, our pal. Hi. Our singing friend. How are things out there, Rosemary? She's th 13 time zones, I think. Where does that put you? We're, friend we're friends on Smule. We started out as uh, we sang on Smule. We had some big hit numbers together. And we uh, decided, let's find each other on Facebook and, and get involved with Lounge Academy. So now Rosemary's a lounge cadet. It's great. Amazing. Yeah. She's got a hell of a voice, too, you know. She's, she's been nailing some high notes uh, 
and phrases that uh, have been really dropping my jaw. Ever since we taught you a lesson when you missed the week that oh, we yeah. had the big star yeah. coming yeah. rolling. I'd love to hear those guys. shop involved in stuff and I, I just actually didn't come down here. I'm, I haven't been down here since uh, Tuesday. It's amazing. I usually work out every night here, you know. Oh, is this where you come in? Yeah. No. Kind of fun to take this a little off. This is the beaten path for me. I go by here a lot at 6, 7 o'clock at night and I see your car there yeah. more often than that. Yeah, I'm here to, here to practice. Can't let Jocko down, you know. Now you know someone's keeping track of you. Yeah. Paul himself. Oh, uh, keeping you I mentioned Jocko. Uh, <laughs> I was with, with my daughter. Uh, she drives. And she puts that 40s on the satellite radio on. Oh, okay. I she gets it from, but yeah, <laughs> but she, I'm she, sure they got it. No, no, she was show, and, it, and it always shows who's playing and, who, and who's uh, singing at her playing, you know. And, and she, I saw a song by Erskine Hawkins, you know who he was. Um, Erskine Hawkins was one of the real up and coming black bands back when they were just coming into fashion. That's a Glenn Miller song. It was a big hit for Glenn Miller. But anyway, I said, I said to her, I said, probably only two people knew who Erskine Hawkins was and what he wrote. Me and Jacko. <laughs> he knew everything. Yeah, yes. he knew it firsthand. Yeah. Because he lived through it as a musician. That was Andy Jones' favorite radio station. He had it in his car. Oh, the 40s? Yeah, I can see that. The satellites? Oh, he, That's right, he had a... Fancy Mercedes. That guy, that guy knew New Mercedes with a satellite radio. He knew, he knew all that kind of music. He really did. I mean, that's when I connected with him. I mean, we got to be great friends because we like the same stuff. I remember we had a discussion about it because it used to be the 40s on 4 and then it moved somewhere else. I 
think we did this song last week. How did we not do this song? Or did we? Maybe, maybe we yes. did. on me and when he, he he had this way about him of encouraging me at the piano every week and I I I was cognizant of it because I was thinking in my mind every time I'm thinking this is what Mike had he oh, had yeah. this guy sure. and, and he was doing it to me you know he was bring, helping bring it out you know he was just so encouraging the way he did it was See, when, when I got Stars. It was a seamless transition. I like that. Uh... We'll get to that later. I wonder what tonight's going to un unfold. 
might just be the guys hanging out eating Doritos and drinking pop, or, or it could be uh, some surprise guests. Yeah, we've worked that out though. Whenever you think that's what's going to happen, then that's when well, somebody comes in with 20 people. Yeah, you never know. Sometimes it blows anyway, up. You started playing it earlier when I was driving with my daughter, and all of a sudden they, they went into a uh, first but why oh why and don't oh, yeah and, don't, don't, and she knew it i go how in the hell do you know that song and i saw it i, I had to bite my tongue of course i know how <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't think we did this one last week i had the craziest dream Yes, I did. next to mine so I kissed him you didn't mind it at all when I'm awake such a break never happens how long can a guy go on dreaming if there's a chance that you care Said, make my, make my crazy dreams come true. Make my dreams come true. Who wrote that one? Harry Warren. Harry Warren. And was it Deets or, uh, or no, no, not Deets, uh, Dubin or? Uh, uh, I'm I don't remember, that's why I was asking you. Dubin, Dubin was uh, his first uh, lyricist. Somebody shot The second one was uh, the guy that wrote all the, you know, the Sunrise Serenade stuff. Who's man? Richie Matt Sellers Gordon. is Matt in the Gordon. house. Matt Gordon. Got something good tonight. Richie Sellers got something good. Richie Sellers is in the house. He's got something good. He plays the blues. And he blows him out of that big harp.
Rivers. <laughs> Small time. Take it easy with that, Richie. You know, the, the, shit. You know the rules around here. It's cold. Yeah. Richie came to party tonight. Kaya says hi, Richie. Kaya, Miranda. Patricia Faraday. Is that the one that did the... She was the voiceover. Yeah. Yeah, the voiceover, yeah. That's what I meant. What a voice. What a song. Did you drop something? I'd like yeah. to welcome Janet from Key West. Wow, it's Friday, all right, Janet. Wow, it's Janet. You got your cocktail in hand, Janet? What the heck is are those guys up to now? Drinking a, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> That's a good one. King crab legs, nice. Man, I haven't had those in a while. You got a lot of like, you got a big thing of butter to dip them in. Why do robins sing in December? One before the springtime. Yeah, from what I've two. Read. And even though it's snowing, shot bottle. Violets are growing. Oh, yeah, a little bit. I know why. And so do you. Why do breezes sigh every evening? Whispering your name as they do. Way by the ceiling, stars are on my ceiling. I know why, and so do you.
Richie wrote a country western song. like this. Sure does. <laughs> That's how they go. Sure does. Two pounds. Two pounds. Again? No, it's called one? four side no weight side two oh. Oh, all right. Janet Drought's eating a two pound remember, uh, king crab by herself. <laughs> but you have the butter. You got the butter and you gotta have the butter for me. So I can live vicariously through your king crab. That's like a drinking glass full, Richie. That's it for you. Do you want another shot? No. No cognac tonight? Well, not while I'm on duty. Eight hours from bottle to throttle. If you do, uh, I'll see that car here again tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be in there sleeping in it. Yeah. I'm running. Well, it's a good night for it. To the Color Musicians Club on Broadway. <laughs> When's Shirley going to come back and see us? That's your job for training. Tell all the gang 42. at 42nd Street that I will soon be there whisper of how how I'm yearning to mingle with all the old time throng that's what it says throng give my regards Oh, ear along. That's a word you don't hear. E R E. I'll be there, ear along. This was a song that I learned ear along in the Buffalo Public Schools, and it stuck What a in great my phrase. phrase the whole time. You gotta go back for this one. Let's see how far back. It's in really small microfiche. That was what's his name, Ma? Uh... Oh wait. It says, no, just, it says 1968. There's no, oh wait, no, no, that can't be it. This is it. This is like, no one could read this. 1912 or something like that. I don't know, maybe Would it got like republished or something. What's the, it looked, it looked right here. <laughs> Look at that. It's like a speck. It's the size of a virus. 1968. By George M. Cohen Music Publishing. Yeah, Company. it must have, it must it have probably got, republished. Right? Yeah, it must have gotten republished. In my regards to George Cohen. This is Kroll talking in his life. I am a friend of mine. We sang that one in school too. It was Mary has a sore throat and she called in sick. Ooh, nasty. Hope we 
go. I think it might be the corona. <laughs> oh, what? What's this? Wow. So she's quarantined. It's Bob's lime dick. <laughs> All I know is that it has lime. But it's very good. Here's one for all the engineers in the audience. About weight and measures. From this moment on, you formed me dear only to fatigue dear. From this moment on, from this happy day, no, no more new songs, only whoop de doo songs. You put that, bring that over here. Oh, yeah. We yeah, got to keep that I away from Rich. The staff isn't allowed to get it. Staff isn't allowed to get it. Putting that over here on the teacher's desk. You ever cut somebody off before they had their first drink? I have a beer, not not my beer, brother. I'm rolling. Wait till wait till someday when I'm selling booze. I'll be I'll be pouring it down your throat. What are you taking for a minute? When I'm making money on it. I'll have a totally different tune. I'll be dancing on the ceiling. He dances overhead on my ceiling.
write songs that are like way different from one another. These guys, the same guys. You're thinking, who wrote that? It can't be.
to thank Barbara Fisher for sending our link, sharing us to Lounge Cadet Diane Elizabeth, who may have otherwise uh, missed out after we moved our programming from, from, from my personal profile page to the official page of WBIG-TV. Be sure to uh, like WBIG-TV's page. Diane Elizabeth. Somebody's paying attention here. Laugh and run away to the jokes I meant. Everyone starts looking guilty all of a sudden. The days, days of wine and roses. Laugh and run away like a child at play. Oh, dude. 
introduced me to the days of wine and roses and lounge academy and me and you thanks everybody music lovers This is for Janice Schlau as she's preparing food to feed Buffalo over the weekend in her fine restaurants located all over town. She knows her music as well as she knows her food. Remember this song from the old days, George Kunz? When somebody loves you.
If you ask me to love you, it's for sure I'm going to love you. show at the last minute and said see if you could get my stand in I got a sore throat and I see you showed up yeah. I showed up yeah I, I would have come either way <laughs> but at this well, point you're, I, you're a trooper uh-huh. you don't seem to leave me right now I know Howard said that earlier and I, I was so she lost she lost. She was she's not oh. yeah, yeah. Like she usually you know, when she's not here she yeah, yeah. usually does not watch the show <laughs> really should that be out yeah, I think she doesn't want to like it to throw off her thing when she's acting, you know. To think, that, you know, maybe she doesn't want to see the show. A lot of people don't want to see in. themselves on TV. Is myself, that right? Myself being one of them, but sometimes you hear about actors and they did a TV show for years and years, and they say, "Oh, I never watched it." <laughs> they don't want to see themselves. I remember when I... Yeah, it's funny. I remember when I... This, uh, apropos of that, Ryan, I, when I used a, sub, uh, a substitute teacher like Richie is now, Richie does everything on the computer, but at the time, you'd have to phone and talk to a live voice. And one day, I was downtown, I decided to go meet this live voice, so I talked every year. <laughs> and yeah, my dad... I told my dad that, and he said, was it, was it awkward? Some people don't like that. They don't like, you know, it's always been... You meant the sub desk? I just... Yeah, you're... Yeah. Finally, a little, face with a little the tour of the room. Find a few of the cameras here for you, Janice. Rory Calabrese. Yeah. Oh, no. It was awkward. Showing Rory and Rory and Janice. A few camera angles. Yeah. Here's the spot. Yeah. I remember all that. Yeah. 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 That's good when there's a lot of action. Yeah. going on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
great as the love It's another great song. It's so relatable. People, I think people could relate to that concept immediately, you know, alone together. You know? It says so much, just the title. See, now that's a song where I'll bet they wrote, just guessing, but I'll bet they wrote the title. I bet they wrote the phrase, alone together, came up, because that's so clever. And then I think the whole song came from that. You know, hmm. now it doesn't mean they didn't start with some melody and were coming up with lyrics and decided to use to go in that direction too, because that can happen. Yeah, but they wrote their songs for you can put them against anybody's. I mean, the greatest songs of all time, decent words were in there. You know. Oh yeah. Um, speaking of copyrights, like if you and I write a song, you decide to throw that lyric and along together. A lot of times you see that song by Cohen, Bulb, and Deeps and Schwartz. You know, I have to give credit to those two guys too. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you've seen I've seen that before. I'm like, I didn't know he was. Well, it's like, oh, because they stole this little. Oh, I, I, oh, song. that's interesting. So, yeah, it comes off. I've seen it. Interesting bit of uh, copyright law. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's too bad. Um, it's too bad. Um, Mary Clinton's Goldman uh, actress stand in. Connie Caldwell couldn't come in tonight. Wouldn't that be great if Connie could come in for Mary, since Mary's home with a sore throat? Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Are you trying to lower Maybe. Her yeah, she's right outside the door. Where are you going to? Wouldn't it be great if by ESP somehow, but she thought, you know what? They need me as a stand-in, as a as a uh, understudy. Mary's understudy. And she got in her car and came right down to Lounge Academy. And that would be incredible. That would be great. That would be so much fun. She was talking about coming down, you know, one of these days. I had the pleasure of seeing her a couple of times in the last like the cameras several weeks or so at house have, parties. Right? Could be cameras following her around. Well, there's cameras following it around here. We can guarantee that. Thanks, I made it myself. Connie Caldwell, am I blue? Am I blue? Pierogies, Polish soup, and pastries. Oh, she's talking to, well, I'm, I'm eavesdropping. She's talking to Barbara in North Carolina. It's girl talk. Some dude he was. Those lyrics are so clever, and that 
Dad, and, and, along with the uh, lemon twist. Those are some of the cleverest lyrics I've ever yeah, heard. He was a, I had one last week. He was a great guy. Jack will love lemon twist, by the way. Too. Twist the lemon. Here's one for, uh, this is, I don't know where he is. Maybe he'll be checking in. So he's running. Well, he, ch he checks in at all different times. This is for Paul Cambria. Here you go. Such a popular song. Wonder, yeah. One hit wonder. One hit wonder. Herman Hupfeld. Yeah. He was a lyricist. How do you accidentally write a song like that? He did. He wrote the lyrics. He didn't write the, write the music. No, I, he didn't write the music. I got on the thing, I think it just says Herman Hupfeld. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Imagine if he wrote them both. Yeah, I'm wrong. And then just like, okay, I had my hit. You're right. Maybe then he moved over to yeah, like well, microbiology or something. <laughs> Changed industries. 
Wasn't there an opera singer who, like, invented invented something like really industrial? Who was that? Mary would know. Yeah, there was a Marlena Dietrich. She was oh, Marlene. Oh wait, or Marlene was it Marlena Dietrich? She was an actress. And and she and tried to spread 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 spectrum in radio waves. That's it. That's what I'm thinking of. Wow. What about Hedy Lamarr? That's amazing. Hedy Lamarr? No. Talk about it, versatility. Hedy Lamarr or Marlene Dietrich? Right. Kathy Moses? Marlene Dietrich. Yeah. We'd like Howard. to thank Anonymous. Jack Shockey used to play it all the time. Howard Which one? Hedy Lamarr. Hedy Lamarr? Falling in love again. Yeah. Falling in love again. Okay, I'm gonna... That's it. Maybe, maybe they both invented things. That was in Georgia. Did you yeah. live in Florida? I don't know. Did you end up broke in Florida? What am I doing? I'm not sure. Okay, what about, okay, what about the, uh, the famous actor the head of the I mean. whose mother in Buffalo and by then White House? Was that one of the? Was was that one of the monkeys or who was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody's yeah, mother. Yeah. Oh, oh, it was one of the monkeys. Wow. It might have been Mickey Dolan's or Mike Nesbitt. Nesbitt. I think his mother lived in Buffalo and she invented whiteout. They they made millions. Really. Uh -huh. Wow. It's cool that it was. In, notice it was. A play on words, whiteout in Buffalo. There had to be a connection there, right? Yeah, 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 I didn't yeah, yeah. know that she was from Buffalo. <laughs> Maybe she wasn't in Buffalo. I just, for some reason, <laughs> for some reason, I've, I've been, uh, it's, it's known to me that, uh, it's become known to me that she was from Buffalo. Can't tell you how I know that. See, this is one of those discussions that people would have in the days before smartphones and the internet. Before Google. Where you could speculate about things and everybody would be kind of wrong and you just come to a consensus. Now everybody just pulls out their phone. I know, I know. See, we don't though, because we're spoiled, because Mary's know. usually here. Yeah. She knows she knows all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she was a lifeline on the millionaire show. Did yeah. you know that, Bob? No. Yeah. Oh wow. This yeah. guy at the Buffalo News, who was it at the Buffalo News that um, got on the millionaire show? Yeah. And he answered one was it it wasn't her boss, was it? Was it Bruce? Was it Bruce? Went on the show, and she was, I remember, she was in the kitchen nervously by the wall phone. <laughs> where she was ready oh, to be the that. lifeline, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, to answer, like, yeah, any yeah. question. Right. And um, he answered one question and, and got it. And then he said, okay, I'm done. I'm leaving a winner. And he left with, like, $1,700. I see. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Brilliant. See, now there's somebody that... He won the millionaires. He's sm the smartest guy that's ever been on there, right? Take the money and run. Mm -hmm. Was this before Google checks and stuff? Or <laughs> Probably. Probably, yeah. Well, yeah. It's and a lifeline they, now. We well, just... it was, you know, back around the turn of the century. I mean, we, we had... We had Alta Vista. We didn't use Google. We had Yahoo. Oh, I, Yahoo was for amateurs. If you were a pro, you used Alta ah, Vista. I see. It was Hedy Lamarr, by the way. Hedy Lamarr. Spread, spread, spread spectrum radio. Not so easy, see, tonight, Rich, to say that, is it? <laughs> Not after two minutes. <laughs> see, I knew it. He can't handle it. How's he gonna? How's he gonna do his sweeping later? Of course, we used to practice working drunk. We used to practice working, you know, at suburban lanes under other influence of all kinds of things. Oh, for sure. Usually a hangover. There were guys who used to walk up at the rafters above the... Not me. I was always afraid of heights. With a catwalk, they used to call that, right? We worked together at a bowling alley. I just went bowling last was it, Saturday. It was more than 40 years ago, right? It was more like 50 years ago. Closer to 50. 26 and 20, 46. Yeah, 50 years ago. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> rounding, rounding up. Plus, Best job I ever had. <laughs> I know. I think it was the only job I ever had, come to think of it. <laughs> and that's where you two guys know each other in the bowling alley. <laughs> yeah. <It's> so funny. <laughs> Richie worked days. Yeah. He was this older kid. I worked nights too. 
I remember you from days the day shift because it you because you were fixing stuff for Stan. I mean, yeah, you same. had an important job. You actually got tools, <laughs> and he used to he used to fix the foul line lights. What did you do there then? You... Well, I was a pin chaser, but yeah. he he liked me. He taught me how to fix things because I was good mechanically. I imagine. Yeah, but um, but that wasn't my job. Your your job was. You had responsibilities to actually like take care of all the foul foul lights yeah. and uh, carpet mounts. Carpet mounts. I remember those. The two studs with the yeah. Yeah. thing. What's a pin chaser mean? We're the guys where well, you, you know, know they'd say "bar return yeah, lane 52," and we were back there. We'd run, get out of our chair, wake up, and and go and fix whatever was wrong and send them their ball back. Then okay. write a note to Stan. We used to write notes and put them in the holes for the girls. No, oh, yeah. Remember that? You, know, like, you do that them. now and they'd like call Homeland Security. I put, <laughs> I put, I put steel wool in Ken Duke's long thumb hole. <laughs> nice. I glued a, a quarter down when Mort was working. I glued a quarter to the floor. <laughs> with epoxy. Well, anyway, that's where and you he, guys he got a thing and took it off. He chiseled it off. <laughs> That's where you guys met? Yeah. I thought you met at the stage door, maybe. Stage door? Over on Franklin Street. No, yeah, no, but... No, but, the but, owner of that, the seer. But Richie was in show business. Yeah, who, who's his name? Who, who is, uh, who he had a blues, he had a blue, hot blues band, and they used to, used to used to rehearse oh, no, in the basement there. of the yeah, of the bowling alley. That now oh, there no, there's a place for a blues band, right? Appropriate place, right. the basement of a bowling alley. If you're gonna rehearse a blues yeah, band, yeah, yeah. So he'd be on there blowing harp, and he had the, these guys with him, and we'd sneak down there just just to hear it. It was great. Yeah. What was the name the of the guys were alley? smoking? I was lucky. My uncle Drew Marys let me go down there. The girls used to come down here too and let me Sure. Lights. Oh, the girls at Suburban, we had a blast. We had a whole crowd, the whole gang. In the that was a lifestyle, that wasn't a job. <laughs> Before they went off with their band. Did you, was there a name to your band? Or was it just Richie Boss Summers? Blues Band. Boss Blues Band, I remember now. That was the first one. Yeah. Where was Sir? That's not taking me to Sheridan Lanes. It's where Sears, where they built Sears on oh, Sheridan the Boulevard Lanes. Mall. Sheridan Lanes is now a parking lot for cars. Yeah, what's Sir Lanes where you guys were? That's not Sears at the mall. It was Sears. Did they tear it down again? Well, no, it's there's still a Sears empty, empty Sears building. shell. It's empty. Yeah. That's the Boulevard. It's one of the barbells of the. Yeah. Okay. I was trying to campaign to get Boscovs to move in there, but it was unsuccessful. I think one of the one of the walls of Sears is a suburban lanes wall, is it? Is it not? Huh. I'm not sure about they that. They saved a few bucks on the on the masonry already there, huh? I, I think I remember that. Sure. Again, I remember oh, things, but I don't remember this. I I can't. Yeah, um, I, got the, footnote, I can't footnote I mean, them with the, 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 the source. Yeah. Um, Oh, you know, so general general right, 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 right. Uh -huh. wow. Amazon, yeah. Wednesday, the nursery. I hope so. Yeah, yeah I had the my... Uh, yeah. I had a wedding. The courtyard. I had something about my wedding in the nursery there. Some family party. A family party we had in that nursery once. But it was not a wedding, a holiday party. Hanukkah. Nursery wasn't all over. It didn't really make a great lounge. I mean, the lounge was a place to have a party. That was a real lounge. I remember the nursery was kind of enough to set up a couple of tables. Not real, you know, it's like party feeling. I remember the review of that makes sense. Films at the party. Culture in North Buffalo. I was never spellbound. By a starry sky, what is there to moon glow when love has passed you by? Then there came a midnight, Joe George is watching, and the world is new. So spellbound, darling, not 
not by stars, but just by you. You know it. You need a couple of notes. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna punch yourself because you didn't know what it was because uh, well, you know it's it. Like name that tune with one note. Two no, no, notes. no. no. Why oh why? And so do I. Or so do you. Six why oh why? So do you. Yeah. Oh. Got going. Uh, I didn't get uh, done with uh, two, uh, three o'clock. Uh, you know, the only reason I'm asking chances. is yeah, you always you trick me on that at last first. I don't think it does. Oh, they called. Isn't that oh, funny? They called. Yeah, they called my house. I know. Yeah, so good. I hope it keeps getting you. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, check back in those days. It's Gregory Evans. And he's watching Lounge Academy. Gregory Evans, he is Lounge Academy, he's a Lounge Cadet, he's got a 62 incher, so they say, so all his friends and family to come over and watch, he's Gregory Evans, he's a heck of a guy. Gregory Evans is watching from, let me see if I get it right tonight, Gregory. Are you serious? I think I always say California and then you correct me and say Florida. If I'm going to stick with California, and then you could, yeah, I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say California, but I think there's a chance you might correct me and say Florida. Either that or it was the other way around where I said Florida and you corrected me and it was California. It must be California. California, they got 62-inch TVs, right? Everybody. They got big, everything's big out there. They you live, they, they, they live life out there. there. You know why the Japanese invented uh, flat screen TVs? Because there's so many Japanese people in a small quarter watching TV, they didn't want to be affected by the radiation. So they invented flat, flat screen. Hmm. That's why they invented the transistorized office building. Tiny, little tiny office building. My flat screen TV broke today. It just fell off. Oh, man. You know, 
Yeah. It fell off the table? Kind of like this one. Wonky, unsteady, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the new one had real good rubber paws. Oh, good, so good. Yeah. You know, and some reason I want to put Southern that. Southern California. Just take it back. I'm excited. You can. 32. But I walked into the room and the thing fell. It fellas. never rained. Wow. Southern California. You know, I got all my stuff. I got the whole thing. I don't know. Greg Abbott. TV will get wet. Southern California, boy. They used to be my dream as a kid. I loved Southern California. I used to go out there once in a while. Go to San Diego. I used to like San Diego. It's Frederick, ladies and gentlemen. Look, at, look how nice he looks tonight from Mount Academy. He must have got one of those robo tickets. Dress for lounge. Is it an earthquake? This is for Southern California, or simply a shock? Greg Evans, is it an earthquake? Or simply a shot? Gretchen Osborne, is it the good turtle suit? Or merely the mock? Is it the cocktail? This feeling of joy? Or is what I feel? Simply a lark. Is it Granada I see on only as a very park? Is it the fancy not worth thinking of? Or is it the long, long last love? Oh. They never got the big one down there at Greg Evans. The San Andrea Falls. Who are they going to blame for not having the falls? Whose fault is it? Good thing that it didn't happen. What, what city are you near? Are you near between San Diego and uh, L.A.? Are you near the mountains? Are you near the ocean? Are you near Huntington Beach? Are you near Black's Beach? There he's in the house. Barry may be with us next week here at Lounge Academy. Greg's been in a 7.3 earthquake. How bad is a 7.3? That sounds bad. Now, Ryan, you should know because you work in an earthquake center. Yeah, we have UB where Ryan has a job. I know we have one. They, they study earthquakes at UB. I purchase things for them to destroy. So you do the buying for them to break the things. So a 7.3, uh, what's, what's the Richter scale go up to? 10? You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> Anybody know here? Boy, we're really dumb when Mary's not here. Each point on the Richter scale is more than just 10 times. Is that right? The previous one. 10 times? Wow. 10 times more. Well, Frederick just said with a, with a voice of authority that each number on a Richter scale, each whole number, is 10 times. 
government the, the previous signs. number. Well, you know, a seven so it's not, it's not like a blood, it's not like an alcohol test. It's not like the, the breathalyzer. A seven on the Richter scale, is, it's a lot worse than a six, but it's not as bad as a, an eight. Parabolic dish outside my condo. Yeah. Well, I think oh, yeah. I think most people would agree with you. Seven point three. So that's that's uh, three times as bad as a seven. A seven point three. I'll, I'll I will then guess that uh, by applying that same formula. So it sounds like no big deal that it's a point seven point three. It's there. But, you know, like a 7.3, right? Who's counting? But that 0.3 means it's three times stronger than a 7. That's a big factor. It's on the YouTube. You guys have done that. Wow, he thought it was the end. It was Lander's Earthquake. I never heard of that. Lander's Earthquake. We'll have to Google it later. He thought he thought he was a goner. Yeah, here he is on Lounge Academy. See, life has so many twists. Hunting did oh hunting did beach, right. I remember the pier on Huntington Beach. It goes way out and then it comes all the way back in again. Girls wear their bikinis. I get sand on my feet. <laughs> oh, Barry's working on. He's working on our, our fireplace painting. Oh, um, over here. Right. Right there, on the mantle there, Barry painted that, and he's just announced he's working on uh, painting 2.0, and it's going to have more women in it. It's a scene similar to... I can't wait. This one right here? Yeah. He's painting it. No, Barry did that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, why don't we have any women here tonight? It's all guys here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You could you could be the first woman here if you dare. We need an understudy for Mary. You're allowed to fart then, right? You're not allowed to fart, no problem. Don't pick your nose or I can't. We do have a pretty good HVAC system though. We do have a pretty good air circulation system in here. Even without it on. There's a lot of holes in this building. Bill Jenkins is here, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing, Bill? Nice to see you, sir. How's Grand Island? That's right. Grand Island, that's an exotic place. Grand Island uh, needs some songs about it. Maybe you could adapt like I'll Take Manhattan. Wasn't the Manhattan Project on Grand Island? Or was that Tonawanda? Everybody got a little bit of the Manhattan Project, I think. Yeah. Bill Jenkins is biting his time. He got snow, so he's waiting. Cause that's the kind of guy I am. Where others folks dizzy, I'm keeping busy. I'm biding my time. Next year, next year, something's bound to happen. This year, this year, I'll just keep on napping. I'm biding my time. Cause that's the kind of guy I'm. There's no regret when I'm sad.
Wow, Bill Jenkins got heated mats for the walkway. I, I heard those things are awesome. Yeah, Barry, Barry, you picked a good night to miss. I don't know what happened to the girls. Where are the girls? Luckily, we've got fantastic women with us here on Lounge Academy live stream. That's where they all are. They're all watching and partying along with us. I'd like to thank Anonymous. Speaking of fabulous women, even though it says Anonymous, I got a feeling I know who that one is. Thank you for supporting our show. Well, you know why there's uh, no gavels here, Barry? It's because you're not here. You're the chick magnet, right? They'd be coming out of the woodwork if Barry was here. Exactly. I did put a screen protector on. I wonder if this is a plastic. 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 Plastic.
So many great yeah. songs. Not a name I recommend. It. I don't know. You know, I mean, I'm sure I like every other Is that it's right? Called Elfie. Wow. Gee, an election does great. I didn't know Sears was spying on us, too. Well, nobody really used an Elfie. They couldn't give them away. Can you still get them? Well, yeah, but they don't do anything. Now I wish I had one.
looking dapper? Barry thinks so. Merci. Yeah, we're going to have to kick it up a notch. You know, April is Except for Ryan. Yeah, Ryan looks Mars, great. So it's Bob looks pretty, pretty good for the lounge. He's got his, he always wears a jacket. Looks good. Yeah, he's kind of, he's got the whole bag going there. Congo, sorry. The big ones are Congo, the little ones are Bongo. This book's getting the curlies. Do you like boxing? Oh, they did, the old days. I don't know anything about it. I might do a little, uh, I know. I might do a little, I might do a little, I mention of one of our sponsors. I really want to play in the same way. Huh. He's got a fight coming up this month against Tyson Fury from pitch. England. Oh. I don't know either one. I know that. Uh, I think that. I know that mo most of you out there are, are familiar with steaming hot loaf. That's, that's our one of our products here. Look how thick that is. This is a, we call this steaming hot roll. We have a website called our steaming hot roll now dot com, or you can go to steaming hot roll dot com. I think it takes you to the same. It takes you to the same same place where you can see more information about steaming hot roll. And I like it with so much butter that it actually like starts falling off. It's all natural ingredients. It's very simple. You're pitching. You're pitching. Wilder. 100% whole wheat. Wilder. The champion right now is Wilder. Uh -huh. Tyson Fury versus Wilder too. Dante Wilder. He's the he's the champ right now. He's he's awesome. So all natural ingredients. Fury, but they're going to go another one. Heavyweight. As Janice Schlau can attest, I'm sure, the, the, the secret for making great food is, it's more of a, a, an art of subtraction rather than addition. You know, you buy processed foods, they just keep putting more and more stuff in. You know, because they got to keep it, Wildly. it's got to transport or whatever. You know. Freshness. Get some chicken on that, Albert. You know, and um, I'm saving the, the chicken for after the show. <laughs> Don't eat it all, everybody. Okay, I'll keep my eyes that's, open. That's a hint, isn't it? Simplicity in cuisine. Color, texture, not too many ingredients, because it gets messed up. And, and it, it just it tastes better. I mean, this, this is 100% whole wheat. There's some butter in it. There's a little bit of sugar, a um, little bit of salt, some yeast. That's it. There's my recipe right there. Water. No oil? No. There's butter in it. Oh, that's it. You don't put butter into the, into the mix, so right yeah. there you put the butter in No, I put butter in it. Do you? Uh, yeah. What about lard? Is there lard in there too? I've done it. I've I've experimented with putting lard in it, and um, Is it just it good. The Muslims, though. It's interesting. It really changes the product when you put, put right lard in bread. No, well, no. It um, first of all, a little bit goes a long way. If you, if you put a little lard in, I'm not saying like substituting. You wouldn't like substitute the butter with lard. Where does lard come from? The lard, the lard come from? It's lard it's pig meat. pig fat. It's rendered pig fat. And, and kind of like put in a, like, like they butter it or something, make it into a butter. Like, it around, so man. What's going on? 
<laughs> Put it up here at the bottom. Go for it. I'm not bogarting the bread. Now, to talk about lard a little bit as a, a small point, in some country, particularly Italy and France, there's certain lard that is not processed, it's sliced, and it's sliced extremely thin, and you eat it, it just melts in your mouth. There's no meat, you just oh, eat the Oh, that lard. sounds great. Oh, lard of the Colonata is the most really? famous. It's unbelievable. Also, I never heard of that. Defibrillator next year, but yeah, anyway, course. that's another issue. <laughs> in Italia. Wow, lard colonata. Lardo de colonata. Wow, lardo colonata. Slice very thin, just melts in your mouth. Wow. It's served like, sir hot or? Sir no, hot. just the room temperature. Yeah, room temperature. Yeah, it would be liquid like butter. Yeah. From the lard you buy in the Because the processed one, I don't know, okay. if we're talking about it, it's the one you spoon out. That's been emulsified, it's been cooked. I don't know what they do. That makes yeah, it's rendered. Yeah, rendered, okay. That's the one. And then at room the other temperature. one is sliced like a salon. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Wow. wow. You know, they just yeah. take the words for granted and yeah, yeah, let yeah, it yeah. off the front. Yeah, yeah, sure. They make any pie without lard, but I don't know if he uses that or the next thing. Right. But I hate well, the butter. The butter keeps falling off my bread. bread. I might yeah. get this wrong. The un is it unleavened? A lot of you know, the United yeah, but no, no, uh, no somebody the, because the king started taxing somebody and they started the making the bread yeah, without yeah. certain yeah. ingredients. I hate margarine. In the desert, yeah. they had to make and, bread. Uh, I don't know about some of the, the flour and the water on the rocks and it came out right? nice. yeah. They couldn't have any time to let it rise. They had to get out of town. And Unleavened. That's it. Unleavened bread. And well, that's what causes the regular baker's name was Earl Levin. He was in. No, I did not. They had to get on eleven. If you eat too much, you'll have an impaction. But I won't go into details. I used to do hospital work. I don't need an impaction. I don't need that much. Half a half a loaf, half a loaf. What's going on, Maestro? Getting tired. That's probably. Just take over the steaming tonight. Yeah, right. Yeah, we stopped over there. Was there work to do? Well, it was very quiet over there tonight at the Stafford. Everywhere. Well, I'll tell you a place. No, a place that was jumping. I was at the Tudor Lounge. There was a, a band, a Rockabilly Steve, a blues, unbelievable blues guitar. Mm. Five to seven, and I walked. I walked over here to see you, friends. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable uh, jam, wonderful uh, band. Somebody, my son, I'm is, that over, is that over on Pearl? Uh, uh, Franklin, you know where the Buffalo Bottle yeah, was? The Bob Franklin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Next, yeah. yeah. Next to the roof, right? Right? Yeah, but yeah, right. yeah. yeah. between, yeah. between the roof, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, just like the, the, the website. I was a little overdressed, I think, for the lounge. I said, I'm coming to your lounge. Yeah, I know. You'll have. You should always be over Yeah, of course. Now there's a part of the corner and there's a little bit of the corner. So it's a little bit of a problem when it's closed now. But, uh, that was a nice so place. There used to be yeah. lost at the corner. Yeah, it was. Well, it's gone. Not there anymore? They can no, it was. Right. And they feed you Buffalo oh, proper was classy. Yeah. So yeah. one thing I liked about it, it didn't have yeah. any but TV so with sports. That's oh, that's TV. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some places yeah, yeah, yeah. five so, so, Sports bar is fine. Uh, I don't like an elegant bar that has these know. bloody TVs on. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I don't either. So how did you hear about the stadium through it? I saw them at Wine on Hurst. Which has music on Friday nights. I thought they, they were extraordinary. No, I only got that. Yeah, I want to see yeah, they they saw them. We got a lot of games in the summer. Something called yeah, yeah, Polish no, Cadets no, or something. Oh, like. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, they've been playing yeah. around Black yeah. Rock for a couple yeah, of years now. At least the Rockabilly Steve. Yeah, he plays the sports games and Hot Mamas. Hot Mamas as well. I have the What's Coming Up. Rockabilly Steve. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Rockabilly Steve, as on Steve. Yeah, they're both all there. Pretty. But I did, I was worried because of the snow. So my friend stopped the car and ran along and said, No, they're playing. I like that. He used to just pop up on the stage on Tuesdays at Sportsman's Tuesday evenings. I love, I, That's country and, and, yeah. and then he started getting his own gigs around 
Rose for Plays with his mom and dad. Yeah. yeah. What was his? Uh, really? But for yeah. me, I'm a better just with this I don't young know. man. I'm not sure. I, I haven't followed. Tuesday afternoon, I, I, big band. I haven't followed stuff with the Plays. I'm interested in it. Yeah. I saw it. 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 I the fact is, I guess they had a camera out there in the center. I'm the new guy, and I'm not And then it was broadcast the rug out, and they bang a garbage can when it would be a fastball. Well, I mean, I saw that. I saw that. That's what it was called. Yeah, I know. What, where do you go? Is that where they got high suppressors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. I'm not. Come on. Uh, you just hit me. I mean, I love that. He told one the other day, I see if I remember it. He said, I know. there was a new fire station. So all the religious leaders went to bless the fire trucks. So the Catholic guy does his thing. The Protestant, the Sikh, puts some smoke. The American Indian does it then. And the rabbi comes and he cuts two inches off the end of the hose. When they go to the mountains. Yeah, right, 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 right. And you don't get it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so it's a cute. big thing of this one. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's what they're always doing. Mm -hmm. Mazel tov and Emma Yeah, Joe. He uh, takes no when, prisoners. Uh, no. Who he gets a standing guy? ovulation. He does all the things. Who was the guy? Uh, one guy boos him from the, time uh, to time. The he said, must have a network to the girls. That all comes together. You don't like any customers that I've seen in five or six Dick Williams. That you just make the number one out of the mound. Uh, he's got that. Yeah. Yeah. When the road, uh, country the West Series of the Cincinnati, the big red machine. It's a joke. Yeah. And that's what they were doing. They came up and they were doing all the time. He said, he and he. He was in college. He was playing my field. Well, that's true. They come back. And they get behind the plane. Yeah, and the other Kobe week ago, Tuesday, the, uh, the big color. man, they yeah. had three singers, said, two men. Don't be surprised. And a woman, the woman the Denise, doesn't come mm -hmm. right back behind. The two B. men were exactly yeah, like yeah. Tony Bennett, Sinatra guys. Oh, yeah, right. Uh -huh. yeah. Right, right, right. right. Clever, though. In the yeah. world. I love that part yeah. of the band. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. 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 Seems to be okay now. Let me know if it still freezes for you. I haven't noticed it on the sign, but I haven't been watching the uh, receiving TV that much. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Yeah, it's got a yellow tail. I won't forget him. All right. George Quinn's, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming by and filling in for Mary. How about another big round of applause for George Quinn's, everybody? Set a lot, and then see see the building there. I'm yeah. going to ask you a question. Yeah. Or the house that was before coal furnaces or anything. 
So I assume those three smokestacks were for fireplaces, right? Yeah, and and uh, well, uh, they had a coal boiler in the in the basement. They did. Yeah, there were. Yeah, there was coal boilers before electricity. They they worked by convection. Okay. Um, well, I remember when I was a, a little They didn't kid, need pumps. We, they had know, we, our our house was heated by coal when I was a little kid. Yeah, there was. There I was, remember a couple of times. Remember when there's the still coal, coal in the basement here. The coal would would burn out. Coal business? I didn't know that. Yeah, Mary told me that last second. She's been holding out, keeping that from me. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm giving up this family secret. Between the coal heat and ice, though. I remember when they yeah. lived in the coal. Oh, coal. Yeah. I love the smell. I love the smell of, of coal. No, I just remember how warm it would be. I mean, I was a little kid then. Two minutes later, I had her side. Catherine's side, yeah. yeah. That's the stuff I yeah. like. It's got the smell when you smell it, because I, I bought some, you know. Uh, I actually became an anthracite coal distributor. And, uh, I actually have 23 tons in stock. And um, so I wanted to see how it works. So I've got an old coal boiler, you know, and I I just fired it up enough to make it go. And when you when I smell that, that's the smell of that coal, it was like a... It was like a smell from my childhood that I hadn't. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. You know, <laughs> it's, it's like, oh my God, that's what the smells like when I was like three. You know, I remember the smell from really? like being downtown or something. Because in the sub, I grew up in the we had electric Ryan or will tell you gas, exactly but the word that fits. Yeah, you had a moment of synesthesia. Synesthesia, is that uh, what that's right. called? Yes. And. Uh, and then you know what I also I took there was like tons of coal ash downstairs. It was there was a room right. filled crawl space, completely filled with it. And I wanted to be able to use the space, so I started trying to you know, well I wound up getting rid of it. But I took some of it in pails, and I thought they used to put this stuff on on the ice instead of salt. Yeah. So oh, I went out front here and I I put a bunch out there on the walk. Wow. And was it good? It, it was a, yeah, it keeps traction, you know, but, but when I looked at it, after it well, sat there for a little out. while. It doesn't melt the ice. It, it doesn't melt traction. the ice. Yeah, yeah it just uh, it makes traction. But after it was there for a few days, like I, I don't know, I came back and I looked and I saw it and it, it was another one of those things when this one was visual. This was a sight I remember seeing uh, just as a small child this, the, of, of coal ash mixed in with the ice on the sidewalk. It, has, it takes on this certain look after it's been sitting there for a little while. And it was like, I must have seen that like when they bring me downtown and stuff. You I know? bet your mom made you take off your shoes so you wouldn't mess up the wow. floor by walking in the house with coal ash. Well, right. well no, because when, when I, I, the day I was born was their first day they were in their new suburban home. They had moved from Richmond Avenue in Buffalo. So um, I only knew the suburb other than we visit my aunt and uncles and things, you know, from time to time in the city, which was only a couple minutes away, it seemed like. Um, so, or I'd be down, my dad worked downtown here, so, you know, I guess I smelled and saw, you know, coal well, in that, use. Kind of, I like the kid. word, you have to teach me I had a right horse now. and racing coal but charmer. There's a couple of pizza parlors, there's two in Manhattan, that, ha that are grandfathered in for wo wood burning. And a pizza made with That's a big thing now. Is a completely different. Somebody said that. I heard the same story. Different thing than the electric. It has a little. It has a Smoky. Yeah. Takes on. Yeah. A little texture like, like a sandy. Mari McNeil would know a lot about that about wood fired pizza. I don't know. I just got a feeling that she would because she's very worldly. McNeil, I get to call her because I'm in show business. Calls her that ever since the media started on there, McNeil. We could have used McNeil tonight to fill in for Mary, you know.
heard a real good song that I said. Mark, this is a good song for Mark. I can't remember the song. But I mean, you know, good standard ballads are good for her. Oh, yeah. She does some ballads, she does a mop. But I mean, when you guys did the, the tandem with uh, Memphis and Julie, you know, I suggested that this song you're about five years ago. It's a neat song that nobody knows. Memphis and Julie. that memory too of his mom taking the ash out. Your eyes don't shine
steaming hot water around here. Steaming hot, steaming hot water. That one solution. I'd like to thank Brian Lysars, president of WBIG. He's on his way out to he's on his way out to another another meeting. He's always going to meetings. It takes a lot to put all this together. Oh, they said we were going to get today, right? Yeah, you're right. 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 Yeah, you're this is like, I don't know, like it's what, oh, like, like Kentucky or something, you know, I mean, it gets, got cool, but I mean, it, or maybe even like Detroit, you know, but, but no, we, but we still didn't get the cold. There's no serious snow. No. cold tonight, but okay, fine. It's winter, it's supposed to be. I mean, we didn't really get the cold or the snow, you know, I mean, it was, not for days on not, night. not like, it was like 15 20 degrees warmer so than average, I, I think, a on a typical it's day. It's crazy. I thought I was going to have to drive my plow down here tonight well, just to get in. Plow with your plow down here. You got a shovel to help you do the driveway. You just roll right up through the wheels. Yeah. Well, you know what? Once I have the plow, like I, I'm probably going to have to take the plow out to do our to do my shop and to do the house and to do the neighbors and stuff. So once it's once I'm in it and it's running and it's warmed up and everything, then I can shoot down here and clean it up. Hey, how did your bed engine come out? Did it work? I, I, it, well, it, it got um, complicated. I had to um, wound up needing new injectors, and I couldn't. The injectors were bad. I had like five that were five of the sixteen. Wow. So. So I had to find a way, you know, everybody that has these cars, they just go out and they pay 900 bucks for these, a new set of injectors, you know, just the parts. It's like, I'm not sure why so they- What did you do, fix your injectors? Well, that's what I tried to do. That was plan A, and I bought the machine, the bench flow thing, which is good to have anyway in my shop, but, and I thought, you know, I bet there's a way to fix these things, you know? And I, and then I found out that, that they were right. This particular injectors they used for two years in the, in the ZR1 Corvette, the first year and second year, 90, 90, 90 and 91, they, um, they weren't designed for alcohol. And I guess they, that's, that must be when they started using alcohol. At least this is what they say. But they, they do, in fact, fail a lot. You know, so... And I had, I've got five that, I mean, I tried everything. I mean, I, I, had, I was putting them in ultrasonic and pressure, running pressure through them both ways and doing everything, different electricity through them and pulse widths and all kinds. Because I, I figured, what can happen to these things? Maybe you have one bad one and you replace it. Turned out there were five that just like really weren't putting out, had all these different various problems with them. I did a little research, and then these these were problematic. The brilliant design. And there, there's a lot of pluses about this design. And it's a pintle, a pintleless injector. Most injectors have a little needle thing, and that's where it sprays out. And um, that's why when they had those, that's why they started selling a lot of gasoline additive to clean your fuel injectors, because it would leave a drop at the end of this pintle. And then over time, every time you shut the car off, there'd be a drop, and it would it would start to form like a like a gel, you know. So everyone was making money selling these things. So so Rochester carburetors, the Rochester who made this system, they came out with this pintleless injector, and that's what these are. And um, very clever design. You know, appreciate you know they're not. People say those are junk and stuff, but they don't appreciate the actual, like, how well these were. But they, I guess it, they might be right. It, they, they use a submersed 
coil in there, and I guess they're, they're, they're prone to electronic failure, electrical failure. So, so I was like, okay, I can. Uh, there's got to be a better way than spending 900 bucks on these on these things, right? So I started doing some. Re I researched it for like two days, and I found that like, one guy mentioned something in a forum, and then I went and started checking the specs and all this stuff, and I didn't find anybody saying this wouldn't work. But there's, there was an inexpensive. I mean, these things are dirt cheap. They're made for like 2003 or 1990 Ford something, right? These these Ford fuel injectors, and they've got the dimensions, and they've got the right uh, flow rates and stuff, you know, where they're, they're actually rated at a, a little less at a little lower fuel pressure, but these run into high, and this one guy's an engineer, and he started Ford calculating Ford injector in your vet. They're, they're from, they're from, yeah, they're from these, these, these little Fords. So, and, and they're, they're made by Bosch. They're, oh, wow. they're made by Bosch. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, these things would fit and they'd be the right fuel flow and stuff, theoretically. And then I saw a uh, place that specializes in, in selling these things and they sell them to guys with ZR1s. And this one place out of all these, they had these injectors and I'm looking at them and they had this, these yellow caps on them. Like, that looks like what that is. So there's an outfit that's actually, they don't say that they're Ford. You know, they're, they're selling them for a little Bosch. less money Bosch. and it's a solution. And, um, but it's, it's off the shelf and no, nobody realized that. So they figured it out and they're selling these things um, as ZR1 injectors as, a, as wow. an alternative. Wow. And, you know, so, so I found some used that a place flows them and sells you a, a set, in sets of eight that are flow matched because you want them within 2% of each other, right? Yeah. And um, I could flow them, but if I don't, they have enough to make good sets out of, you know, that flow the same. So, so this place had them, and then I hit them on eBay, and it's a place that they do a good job, I could tell, you know, they got the good equipment to do these injectors. So they had these things for like 70 something bucks for eight of them, I need, I need 16 in my case. So I even sent them a, sent them a, an offer for less and he said, well, these are, you know, they're regular 100, they're on sale for 72 or something. He sold them to me for 68. I even saved them another couple of bucks, including shipping. And they just came in today. And I, I took one out of the package and I took my micrometers and I checked. And it was like, it was within like a couple thousandths. There's one critical area where where it's not normally an area where a seal would go, but that's what they did on the ZR1s for those two years. They had the normal little seals that go on the end, and then they had a big seal that goes in the, in, in the uh, plenums, in the, the actual injector housings, and they put a big seal, and it fits around like a, a big fat part of this thing that normally like nobody else uses it as a seal contact surface. So it's like, that's gotta fit, right? I, I chuck him in, it's like a couple thousand off. Uh oh, I hope, you know, this was a little risky. So I went down and I stuck one in the engine and it, it fits the seal really well. Like it, the seal doesn't know the difference. So uh, that was one thing. So I'm gonna probably put them in over the weekend or uh, I'm gonna flow test them on my bench just to make sure to see, see what they look like and stuff, run some mineral spirits through them, watch the patterns. It's kind of fun, I got the machine to do that. And, uh, huh. and the machine was broken, remember? So I had to research to find a cheap pump. That, was, that took a few days. So it's like, this has been an ordeal, you know, but I'm doing it for tens of dollars. And uh, so this job, it cost, it's costing me like 138, I think I paid. Saved a thousand bucks. Something, 136 delivered for, for 16 injectors, yeah. you know, wow. rebuilt and flow tested wow. instead of 900. But we'll see, you know, see how it runs. It's a 1990 Corvette ZR1. It was the fastest production car in the world that year. And uh, it's funny, you mentioned the Robin Bosch Corporation. I call it Bosch, you call it Bosch, I think. The, the cars I mean, yeah, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I worked for them. Oh, you did? And my father, after the war, everything that came in from Germany 
was on his trucks. I mean, right after the war. Robert Bosch, fast sewing machines, Semper tires, the rebuilding of German manufacturing. Everything in the United States was on my father's trucks. And I worked for Robert Bosch Corporation when I was 16, 17. Wow. Interesting. See you, love. See you. Okay, take care. See you, Rich. Yeah, Thanks, Howard. Take care. Thank you, Paul Kokoda. See you. See ya. We'll see you next Friday. week. We'll be counting on you next week. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's my saga. It's fun. I, you know, I like to I like to try to do these things well. Yeah, the vocabulary you use it's impressive. I have no idea what you're talking about half the time. I mean, I understand the theme, but not the specifics. But I, I hear you. It's yeah. Well, and I didn't I know envy, this. I envy you. A couple of weeks ago, I didn't know this stuff either. That's one of the reasons. Another reason I wanted to do it was to. Uh, I just so ordered, I know it. ordered a 24 volt solenoid for my humidifier, buzzing like crazy. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't open up for the water. 24 volt solenoid, is it AC? A lot of times they use AC. 25 volt, yeah. They use 25 volt ACs on a AC. lot of HVAC equipment, I noticed. It's AC. So there's a, a switch for my furnace. When I pull the door off, it shuts off the power. That should be good enough, right? I, I don't even know where on my circuit board the furnace switch is. I don't um, know where it well, is. Uh, well, to find out. Well, I'll use an ohm meter to find out. I'm not going to yeah. stick my hands yeah. in it. Then you can, la then you can a, label your breaker and you'll know then. For, oh, just turn them all off? Yeah, turn one on a... Somebody see, else in the house that tells you, yeah, figure, that's figure, the lights in the living yeah, room. Yeah, figure out, the, figure out which one it is. Turn them off one at a time until the furnace turns off. Oh. When the blower's on. Depends how it's wired. You never know how it's wired. In Germany was your father's truck in business. It might not be a main power, you know. Yeah, but the twenty-four volts is is a power to power. 
anything but love. Baby, that's the only thing I plenty of. My baby, dream a while, scheme a while. We're sure to find happiness, and I'll guess all the things you've always pined for. Gee, I'd like to see you looking swell, my baby. We could ask Joe Wall. Joe just, Wall, are you still here? I was just going to turn it off. Is it by code to put a furnace on a separate breaker? How many? How often would a furnace we share a breaker with other other things? Probably never. Too much. I've never seen it. Too much. I mean, if somebody wires something themselves, they'll do it any way they want. I got a feeling it might be code even to have it on a self own well, breaker. I figured if the furnace went off. The 24 volt solenoid is on the same line, but I'm going to put my ohmmeter on, and if it's dead, I'm going to work. Because all I got to do is put the solenoid in, put the in water and the out water tubes on. Oh, okay. Oh, then, oh uh, you know what? The, the, yeah, the humidifier might be an, uh, an accessory to the furnace. So then. So it might be just running off the same 25 the volt AC. Transformer yeah. that's powering the, the furnace. electronics. Maybe. It powers, it it powers the. You've got an electric electronic module on the furnace. The control board. Yeah. Yeah. And that's powered computer, by twenty. That's the twenty. motherboard. That's twenty-five volt AC. Yeah. So, they may have taken that same transformer, and they're just powering the. I bet that's what they're doing. It's probably all one. Maybe find out. I mean, I'm gonna use the old man. I'm, I'm guessing. Use, I'm guessing. I'm gonna use needle noses, so I'm not gonna be touching wires. You know what I mean? Did somebody parked by the fire hydrant? Right. Buffalo oh. cop is cold up there. I don't know if anybody oh, is. Is there a cop out there? Yeah. Wow. It's all right. Are you kidding? On a Friday night, they're not worried about people yeah, parking. The they're worried about people stabbing. Yeah, I can imagine. These guys have their work cut out hey, for man, them. I did some heavy duty with 220 at the bowling alley. I've been knocked against the wall. Really? You got hit by 220? Yeah. Mm. That's no fun. All right, well, thanks, everybody, for... Uh, Maybe that's why I'm all goofy. Thanks for joining us at Lounge Academy. Thank you, Frederick. I came empty-handed. I'm embarrassed. I came from somewhere oh, else. Right, never come empty-handed. Oh, look how nice you look. Oh, thanks. That, that's You're what right. counts. You're a diplomat. This is TV. Diplomatico. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. I'll see you next Friday. Okay, we'll count on that. Thank everybody for uh, joining us tonight here at Lounge Academy. We've got to do one country western before we go. Come on. 
I'm going to do my new song. Four, you want to do it? Four, right. five, oh, eight, five, two, oh. All right. Let me just get my bag out. Then you can do the national anthem. Then we'll do that. We'll get out of here. And oh, I'm doing it too. Take care of Mary's throat. You need, yeah, am I in this one? Yeah, you got to do the country western song. All right. Hang on, we got an epilogue, a little bonus tonight. The Jews Brothers doing country. The Jews Brothers coming up. Country Western. Here on Lounge Academy. Plus, there's a story to this song. Like all country western, there's stories, right? Can you do it in E? E? Well, I, I'll, e -A -B? I'll, I'll, I'll try to do it in whatever. That's just one. Key you want. I'm I'm not, you know. I don't even have to bring out my my big guns for this one. Thank you, Janice Schlau. Whatever happened to uh Janet eating the uh two pound king crab? I think it won. I think it ate her. In Key West. Janet Drought. Oh, Janet, Janice likes country western. Well, I hope you like it after I do it. I've never. <laughs> never know. Lounge Music's Academy. music. Lounge I'll just get into it. Song. Right, Janice? Never know. The random new band might be listening. song is like Rod Stewart once said, a picture tells a lot of different things. But I was a mechanic once in the bowling alley. I, I was needing to better my life in the job market. So I started drawing pictures while I was in the pit on paper. Right. It's old score sheets and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so before the rapids. It comes out installed. that I, I draw a heart. And that led to... Um, a feeling that my imagination and creativity was on the rise. <laughs> a pulling in the mechanic drawing the heart. You know, that was it. Yeah. So uh, I called it the love tester. And I thought that maybe if I put a, a light to it and a button, and you press the button, it would be like a toy that love exists. So it was like an imagination and something novel in and of itself. And it was in between a roly-poly toy and a treasure hunt device where you'd put keys into the heart, and only one key would fit the circuit and light the heart. And uh, it went on to become a patent. So... A patent? Patent. Patent. Oh, patent. Patent, so... I patented this. Wow. And uh, I figured that <clears throat> the bomb that it was, I'd write a song about it. <laughs> Country yeah. Western. Yeah. <clears throat> Down and out. Down and out, kind of country. The, per, the product bombed? Yeah. I didn't go anywhere. I went to the Rochester Toy Fair. It was like slipping on a banana peel. I couldn't get anywhere with it. Yeah, well, hey, you know, you're preaching to the... So, nonetheless... That's how inventing is. Because I was take... lying in bed this week thinking about what to do again in Lounge Academy. I would write a song about this experience. 
Okay. What is this like? Is this like this, is this like a like a, a blues progression? And uh, no, it's just country western. However you feel, country western. I'll sing it. Oh, you didn't actually write. <clears throat> you wrote the lyrics, and now we're going to write the the music. Oh, okay. Music. All right. Let's uh, <laughs> let's do it in F. Oh, I got to go to F now. I got to I got E. I just feel very F. F. Okay. No problem. F up. Okay. F up for sure. So we got a little. Here we go. F. Unless you want to do C or... No, F, you're F. good. You're good. Okay. You're good. Ready, Maestro? I yeah. Mean, um, Gregory Evans is looking forward to this. Call 4508-520. Jesse, don't lose that number. Look that number up in the patent office and you'll it's see Jesse. my story even more. Oh, that's your patent number. Wow. I don't own it anymore. It's been over 17 years. So you relinquish rights. Uh, look it up in the U. How what is numbers, it? The U.S. How many numbers is it? How many? USPTO. Four, look five, that up in the USPTO. Four five zero eight five two zero. U.S. Patent four, five, and Trademark eight, Office. Four million five hundred eight thousand five hundred twenty. Six numbers. I gotta get one more little drink before I do. I mean, I'm gonna look at the lyrics here just to, to try to like inspire um, yeah. the, the music. Yeah. Stuck in the rut, back in the pit, set up the pin. I hope I'm not giving away the farm here. No, you're okay. Stuck in a rut. Oh, I'm on down to Gotta do that with that country western draw. All right, well, I'm gonna, uh, I'll just, I'll, I'm hoping. I'll, I'll just yeah, I'll draw inspiration from your, how you, you do this. I'm hoping Joni, Ramblin' Lou's wife, now is listening. Where, where'd you go? We'll be I thought on WXRL. We're, by the way, we're, he's, he's, Richie's gone. We're doing the. We'll be on WXRL. The Ramblin' Lou Band. Okay, uh, hit it.
light up and spread your rays each and every day. Tester. Richie Sellers, the love tester. He's got a patent and everything. Thank you. Oh, oh, nice, Richie. That was a sad song, right from the heart. The loser. <laughs> you were actually a pin setter as yeah, a kid. Was, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I remember when they didn't have the electric thing. When they used to wow. be a kid in the, down at the end. Oh. And you yell, set the pins. Paul Kimber has got that at his house. Yeah, I saw it. He's got an auto, he's got a manual pin setting. He's he's getting an automatic though. He's, <laughs> he's gonna, buy he's gonna reach too? the fifties and get it. He's gonna get a he didn't know he didn't know what kind. He said the guy is just taking he's care gonna, of it. Oh wow. Because I asked him the same. He's you gonna get an A too? Wow. Or an A. Wonder if he could still get an A. AMF too. Yeah. He got time. That's a rough job being oh, a, a manual pin setter. Scambling over the things. Yeah, I home. never did that. I used to work. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, sirs. Lights out. Well, thanks, everybody. <laughs> Try to make another sound for next week's Live in the Canyon. Next time, Sons of Pioneers tumbling tumbleweed. Now, Janice. That came out she, bluesy. She knows all kinds of music. Well, it was very Wait to hear what color it was. Country. It, it was not a, country. It was bluesy. Well, it was blues. Ride them, cowboy. Okay. My, the country western song I got is... No, I'm on a horse, out. Gregory Evans. Horse okay, well, you guys were great tonight, and thanks to the Dan Spawn for um, liking the stream. You need to ride home? Yes, sir. But and I'm going there. We'll way. see you all next Thank week, same time, same down, place. Mary will be back, and we'll all have a ball. Everybody have a great, so, great week. And uh, I hope Mary feels yeah. better. I'm sure she will.
Take her or some else. Take nice cognac, brother, here. Make sure you take this <coughs> cognac home. Oh, oh, thanks, Rich. She'll swallow this in her throat will feel better. Yeah, well, well, maybe I'll pound some of that That's at rehearsal. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Thank you. I, gotta... I have to play Barbara out of the room. Possible. That I find you in my arms is it's impossible. Tell the sun to leave the sky. It's just impossible. It's impossible. Tell a baby not to cry. See you soon. Not, not, the, not the scare people. Keep lounging. You can see the, the uh, cleanup crew is, is in process. Of work. In process. And there we go. Okay. Enjoy your week. We'll see you next time right here.